This is the Model 858 Hot Air Rework Station, a must-have for anyone with an electronics workbench who also happens to be on a budget. It gets shouted out in all sorts of videos about electronics work for beginners, and there are a million different rebrands out there, but they're all essentially the same inside and none of them cost more than 50 bucks. The one problem though, the 858 wants to kill you. Okay, not every version, just most of them. Let me show you why. The 5 amp fuse here is well and good and seems like it should protect you from harm, but unfortunately, if you encounter a condition where that fuse blows, you're not safe. In fact, you're very unsafe. The fuse breaks the neutral or common leg of the circuit. In other words, it's the absolute last stop on the way back to the bond neutral in your breaker panel. If it blows, sure, the 858 will shut down, but there will still be power desperately searching for a way to get back home. And if you're unlucky, it might just travel through you to get there. I'm good with that, thanks. Here's how the 858 should be wired. With the fuse on the hot leg of the incoming line before the power switch. That means, should you encounter a fault, there is no possible way for any current to get to any part of the 858 hot air rework station, and by extension, no way for it to get to you. Thankfully, modifying the 858 is super simple and it takes hardly any time at all. Here is how I modified mine. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the screws on the back of the unit. There are four of them. They're not particularly difficult to remove. They're just kind of cheap and crappy, but what do you expect? This thing cost me, I believe, $38 plus shipping. Good to keep in mind that there is a little plastic part of trim around the back. It's only there for looks, I guess. It's not structural or anything. So if you forget to put it back together, it's not a big deal, but you'll be wondering, why do I have this oddly shaped piece of plastic? Oh, right. And then you'll have to put it all together. <laughs> or maybe that's just me, but you want to want to take that little plastic piece, thread it through your cord, put it to the side. See you later. Now we get to look at the juicy innards of our 858 workstation. Pull the power connector from inside that goes to the circuit board. You're gonna wanna pay attention to that. Also, this is a little bit of a pain, so get it out of there. You can always replace it. I'm sure you have zip ties everywhere. Everyone has zip ties everywhere. The blue is our hot coming from our cord. The brown is our neutral coming from the cord. That is how they wire things in Germany. Anyway, we're gonna cut the brown that's coming from the cord going into the fuse. Then we're gonna cut the blue that goes to the switch. Obviously, we're gonna strip them down. Give them a nice little twist right there. All right, now we have both our browns taken care of, ready to go. Let's get our blues squared away. This is where you kind of have to pay attention because it starts to get to the point where you could screw yourself up here. This yellow goes back to the fuse from the power connector. We want to take that, strip it, and match that yellow that comes from the power connector with the brown that goes to the cord. Then we want to take the blue from the power cord, put a splice on there and add it to the brown that goes to the fuse. I know, it's annoying and stupid. And if I had thought ahead, I might have gotten some different color electrical tape to make this easier, but I didn't. No, that's not true. I did think ahead for this one. Just not ahead enough. Anyway, the yellow that's coming from the fuse wants to go to the blue that's going to the switch. That way the fuse goes immediately from the power cord to the fuse, from the fuse to the switch.
Now we just want to shrink them down. Oh right, we don't have a hot air rework gun to shrink it, so we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way with a lighter. Be very careful not to burn the insulation on your wires like I did right there. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. That's that's fine. That's nothing that a single half lap layer of electrician's tape won't take care of. It's good for 600 volts. That is something I learned in school. So yeah, uh, if you do encounter a, a, a little bit of a problem where maybe you burned your insulation, Go ahead and throw at least one half lap layer of electrician's tape on it and it'll be fine. A little bit more carefully now. Oh, look at that. It just came together so well. Now we need to test continuity. Into the hot side. And we have continuity. That is just what we wanted. Let's open up that switch. And we have an open circuit. Beautiful. Let's close that switch up. Kapow, look at that. We are golden. So, reverse the process, put it all back together. Get that little annoying thing in there. Don't forget which side is up on this little plastic trim piece as you thread it through and put it back together. It's a little bit of a pain because you have a lot of wires to deal with and they don't wanna go back into place. So, you know, say some colorful language, tell it who's in charge and then show it who's in charge. No, but really it is it is a little bit finicky. It's kind of a pain, but just keep at it and I'm sure you'll get it. I got it. I believe in you because I believed in myself. So there you go. Get that trim piece on there, lined up with the holes. The holes at the top are a little bit wider so you can slide them around a little bit. Put your four screws back in there. Don't torque them down too much because again, this is a $45 or $38 or $50, depending on what day you get it on eBay or Alibaba or Amazon. All right, it is back together. Let us give it the smoke test. This is not my favorite part. In fact, this is my least favorite part, but here we go. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, and by the way, the temperature is in Celsius, not Fahrenheit, unlike my soldering iron, which is in Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So get ready for some fun and confusion. But yeah, works great on those uh, heat shrink crimps. I kind of wish I had had something like that earlier, you know, when I burned my insulation. Anyway, there you have it. Not particularly difficult to modify this to where it won't kill you. You just have to pay attention and have a little bit of knowledge of what you're doing helpful if you know a little bit about res residential or commercial electrical wiring but have fun it doesn't cost you anything but your time to make it so it doesn't kill you